Greetings and thank you for joining us at FutureMoneyTrends.com. I'm here with a good friend of the show and a very trusted person we have in our community. Um, he's a rock star in Vancouver. and Everybody knows about Endeavor Silver. Uh, Bradford Cook is the founder and CEO of Endeavor and founder and CEO of Canarch Resource Corp, uh, trading under CCM on the Toronto Exchange and CRCUF on the OTC side. Uh, Brad, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Daniel. Brad, I'm really happy to see Endeavor Silver have a just an amazing last 72 hours in the market. It's, uh, you know, it, it has been in, in the doldrums. It's it's been kind of you know sluggish for all the juniors. In fact, the the smaller ones have, have been hit really hard. Um, is this the type of turnaround you were expecting? Is this just the beginning of what's uh, of what we're, we should be seeing in the junior mining market? Well, absolutely. It is um, a standard. Uh, end of summer uh, turnaround for the gold and silver sector. Uh, we've come to recognize this pattern for uh, most of the last 10 years of this uh, secular bull market for gold and silver. And uh, I do believe that uh, starting last Friday was um, the setup for the next leg up in the precious metals. On on the um, silver side, uh, silver, um, you know, going back a year and a half ago when silver hit, hit $49, it was it was going straight up uh, <clears throat> for a time there. About a week, it was going up a buck a day. I'm sure every every silver bug in uh, in the world was was texting all their friends every every few hours. Um, did you ever think that you would see silver go all the way back down to 26 and then stay down here for so long? Daniel, if you had asked me in August of 2010 when silver was 18 dollars, what I thought of 30 dollars silver in the spring of 2012. I would have said fantastic. Uh, the fact that we had a round trip to fifty dollars and back to twenty-five is almost beside the point. You know, the, there was in fact a, a mini bubble in the spring of two thousand eleven that drove silver too high, and it subsequently gold in August of last year. Uh, and so the, um, the length and strength of that run-up absolutely dictated the the depth and length of the following correction, which um, most people weren't prepared for. Um, but we finished that correction. The bottom was put in in May. The three-month sideways consolidation was completed last week, and uh, we're ready for the next move up. Um, that's on a technical basis. Fundamentally, whether you want to look at um, you know falling gold supply or uh, rising silver demand, there are an umpteen dozen reasons to believe that these metals have lots of room on the upside. Yeah, you guys, if, if anybody hasn't seen your uh, recent videos on silver, they're an absolute must, uh, very thorough, and I guarantee it, it'll make any investor very confident in their, in their silver uh, purchase or silver mining share purchase. On the uh, on the gold side, Brad, with uh, Canark Resource Corp., uh, when we first introduced Canark to our members, uh, it was a videotape of a lunch presentation as well as an interview with you, and you said there were some people on third base and second base and a bunch on first base uh, that might be interested in doing some type of joint venture with Canark. Uh, is there an update to that, or are we still uh, are we still in negotiations with several? Um, what I can say, um, sticking to the baseball analogy, is that we ran into an unexpected rain delay, mm -hmm. uh, but the game is very much on, and we should see some news very soon. Now with with um, with Canark Resource Corp, they, it's been trading. Uh, it's 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 been a very stable company uh, as far as the share price recently. Um, what are the reasons if an if an investor is just learning about Canark today, why should they be looking at Canark uh, when there are there are a lot of other juniors? My first thought is, of course, not very many of them are run by somebody who's already built something amazing. Uh, but in your opinion, if you're talking to somebody. Why, why should they be looking at Canark right now for some gold exposure? Well, Daniel, first and foremost, Canark has a core gold asset, the new Polaris Gold Mine Project in northern BC, with more than 1.1 million ounces of gold drilled out. Uh, we have uh, plans to develop a project, and we've, we've never had the currency, that is, the strength of the stock price in recent years, uh, to finance the development of the mine ourselves. So we have been seeking the right partner, uh, both to finance the company and to develop the mine project. And uh, that's what we've been focused on all of this year, and that's um, what I think we can uh, bring in terms of uh, material development here shortly. Um, it's still 
uh, up in the air, obviously. There's been no announcements yet. Uh, but management has been working very diligently uh, to bring in a partner for New Polaris. Uh, secondly, uh, the management team at Canark uh, are mine developers. Gary Piles, our president, has built and operated gold mines all over North America with an almost 40-year career. Uh, he's the perfect guy uh, to facilitate the partnership and development of our new Polaris gold mine project. So we have the ingredients in place for a significant spurt of growth, and this past several months, uh, you know, sideways slide in the stocks and the metal prices um, slowed down all of our deal-making initiatives, but we're very much, we feel, on the verge of, uh, of uh, getting something done there. Now, on the junior mining uh, side, as far as the sector itself, uh, you're, you know, you're in Vancouver, very well known in the junior market. Um, I've seen a few, uh, you know, well-known analysts come out and say they think that a significant amount of juniors are going to be filing bankruptcy. They're going to be, they're going to not exist in 18 months. Is that your feeling? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the overall junior sector? Are some of these companies, um, have they been so beaten down, they're not able to, you know, get their warrants exercised or financed? Uh, are we going to see a lot of juniors uh, going away in the next 18 months? Well, before last week, that was probably the prevailing opinion. Uh, the entire uh, junior mining and junior exploration sector was so beat up that um, really people were giving up. But it's that capitulation that that, that um, sparks the turnaround, and we've seen the turnaround starting last week. So I think that's probably old news now, and um, a number of juniors who actually have good management teams and or good projects uh, will actually not only survive but thrive uh, in this emerging new cycle for gold and silver. Now, does that play out with the overall global economy when you're talking to different investors around the world uh, or, or going to different conferences around the world? Um, what is your overall feeling of the pulse of the global economy? Uh, in the U.S., we still feel quite sluggish. We're not in recovery. We're also not in depression. We're just kind of chugging away. How's the rest of the world? Well, you know, Europe's struggling economically as well with uh, really obvious sovereign debt problems yet to resolve. China's been in the news these last three months for a market slowdown in economic activity there. And so all in all, not that great on the economic front. However, gold and silver respond more to financial and monetary measures than economic measures. And in the case of uh, American and China economic slowdown, uh, there's no question that ec economic stimulus packages are in our near future. I mean, Bernanke has said as much in uh, last Friday's meeting at Jackson Hole. Uh, the Chinese have kind of hinted as much as uh, their growth rate has slowed from double digits to kind of middle single digits. And stimuli can have only one effect on the U.S. dollar prices of gold and silver, and that's higher. So Europe, by the way, Daniel, I should not skip Europe. No. Uh, you know, their uh, postponing of their chronic sovereign debt problem also has only one solution, and that is to pump more money in to uh, pay off or defer uh, bad debt. And once again, that kind of uh, money printing can have only one logical result in the prices of gold and silver. Um, on the uh, QE front and just kind of going out the rest of the year, we have seen the turn in, in the precious metals. It looks like we're going to get QE. There, there's an election in the U.S. Uh, do you have any kind of uh, you know price targets, or where where do you think the metals are going to be in the next six months as far as pricing? I think that the <clears throat> potential this year is still for a retest of the nineteen hundred dollar high on gold, uh, because silver is the poor man's gold. It does typically lag behind gold. And so if we do, in fact, see that $1,900 test on gold, uh, we're not, I don't think we'll see a $50 test on silver. We maybe we'll get to 38 or 40 on silver, which still maintains that 50 to 1 ratio for this year. Um, I, you know, Obviously, markets move in a stepwise fashion, so as we get into next year, you may see some healthy corrections along the way, but my outlook for next year would be higher. Did you guys hold off any um, of your silver over at Endeavor uh, when the price was in the 26 and change area? Well, we did carry a significant bullion inventory all through the last two quarters, pretty much. Um, having uh, hoarded some metal in December, we sold it in February, hoarded it again in March, and have just started chipping away on it here in, in the last couple of weeks. So, um, 
you know, it's not like we're trying to make uh, $40 out of our silver inventory, uh, but $30 certainly looks more attractive than 26 Brad, a few of the uh, mining companies are, you know, selling the bullion with, um, you know, their stamp. I've seen the Endeavor uh, bullion and the coins with, um, you know, on your videos. Are you guys going to be offering that anytime soon to the public? Well, we're not in the business of selling coins. Um, so the short answer is no, but uh, we are looking actually at a new coin run, uh, given that we just purchased our third mine at El Cubo in Guanajuato State, Mexico. We'd lo- very much like to have a new coin to commemorate that occasion. Well, it'd be very interesting. I'd, I'd love to find out how I could get one. <laughs> um, Brad, do you have any plans on going to any resource shows, or is Canark or Endeavor going to be in any resource shows uh, over the next uh, six months to a year? On the Endeavor front, we're uh, very active on the bigger shows, so I'm down in Denver next week for the annual Denver Gold Forum. It's probably the preeminent producer's show for gold and silver. Um, I also have a couple of road shows lined up this year for Endeavor. There's the annual Munich Precious Metal Conference in early November as well. Um, From the Kenner point of view, uh, our focus is entirely on getting a deal done, and then we'll think about marketing after that. Very good. Oh, well, two very exciting companies, Endeavor Silver. If you're looking for a silver producer, if you're looking for gold exploration um, with a company that has some very seasoned management, uh, definitely uh, recommend everybody checking out Canark Resource Corp today. Uh, Brad, thanks so much for taking the time with us. Will you be in California anytime soon? I'd love to buy you uh, lunch or dinner. Well, Daniel, I have an even better proposal for you, but uh, we'll have to do it offline. Okay, sounds good, Brad. Thanks Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Daniel.